All right, so after months of waning COVID infections, airline travel began surging, but all of that is all being put into question by an alarming rise in COVID infections across the country due to the Delta variant. Now, airlines aren't sure whether business travel will return in September like they had hoped, and they are left to contemplate what further safety measures they will put in place. Joining us now, the CEO of Delta Airlines, Ed Bastian. Nice to have you back on Good Day New York. Good to be with you. Ed, how's business these days? You know, we're doing well. Uh, I appreciate the concerns around the variant and we're all doing our very best to take safeguards, continue to promote vaccinations and protecting those that haven't been vaccinated. But business is really strong. Uh, the planes, the airports, for those of you that have been out, realize that our, our load factors are between 80 and 90 percent full. Uh, business is not returning at the pace we were hoping for a few months ago, but it is returning. We're close to 50 percent of our normal domestic business travel is back. Uh, you're seeing businesses start to push their reopening plans for the offices out 30 to 90 days, and that's causing a little bit of a pause. But in all material respects, our business is in a much, much better place than it was uh, just a few months ago, actually. So, Ed, uh, before you came on, we had uh, Ken Langone on from NYU Langone Medical uh, Center. He talked about basically um, instituting a vaccine mandate for employees, either get vaxxed or you lose your job. Is that something you're contemplating with Delta? No, we're not. I, I think all employers have to understand their culture, their people, uh, their importance in terms of the place of operations, uh, hospital, medical center. I could certainly appreciate Mr. Langone's comments. But for our company, we're almost 75% vaccinated already. Uh, and if you think about that you have a, you know, probably some portion, maybe call it five to 10% of our employee base that's gonna have some medical or religious reason why they're not getting vaccinated. You're really down to a relatively modest number, maybe 10 to 20% of the unvaccinated that you could drive with a mandate. We're gonna continue to encourage it. Uh, I think we, there's some additional steps and measures we can take to get the vaccine rates even higher. But what we're seeing is every day, those numbers continue to grow and I'm really proud of our team. I think we've got one of the highest vaccination rates in the country without a mandate. That's really good that you guys do have that in place. I know that you were recently asked about mandating vaccines for passengers, to which you said it was hard to mandate something that wasn't federally approved yet. So once this does become federally approved, which we're hoping to see that at the end of August, maybe a month from now, would you have any, I guess, change of opinions on mandating vaccines for passengers? I don't think so. I think the volumes of people that we're carrying, when I was asked that question, I referenced the fact that at Delta, we're carrying over 2 million people a week and our industry is over 10 million people a week. The, the logistical challenge of getting vaccination paperwork and understanding exemptions and who could travel and who wouldn't, I think it would cause a, mm -hmm. a massive crimp on the operations. As you can tell, people are safe on planes. Um, the majority of them are vaccinated. The vast majority, in fact, are, uh, as well as our employees. We're wearing masks. It's a really safe environment. So no, I don't think the air travel system is going to be enhanced by requiring vaccinations. If anything, I think it's going to set us back. Hmm. And so especially in terms of those wait times, I'm sure. I um, wanted to ask you about the U.S.-U.K. corridor still not reopening. I, I know we we're supposed to be expecting that to be announced maybe sometime this summer. And I know a couple of other airline CEOs have publicly expressed their frustration with this, especially with the U.K. being very much highly vaccinated. Have you ever heard, have you heard any word about maybe when that would open up? I don't. Uh, we are pleased to see that the UK is finally open for US vaccinated travelers to go without quarantine. And when that opened up last week, our bookings jumped uh, to the UK and any any US travelers looking to go to the UK, it's open. Uh, you should go and take advantage of this, this window of opportunity uh, on the front end as people are coming back together in the world. Uh, I don't know. The White House is controlling the decision around not just UK, but uh, European nationals and many foreign nationals coming into our country. I think the variant is giving them pause with respect to reopening uh, access to foreign nationals coming into our country. We'll continue to work very closely with the White House. Hopefully it'll happen uh, soon, but I don't have any timetable.
Wondering about pilot shortage, I know some of the other airlines have been expressing frustration with that. Uh, has Delta been hit with that same problem? No, we haven't. Uh, Delta is one of the very best airlines to work for, and so we have great demand uh, coming out of the military as well as civilian uh, uh, institutions to come work for our company. I do think you're going to see over the next several years uh, shortages start to uh, show up probably in the smaller carriers, uh, the regional carriers, the carriers that the pay scales aren't the same as the majors. Mm -hmm. But uh, for now, no, we're not having any problems. We're in the midst of hiring. Uh, a thousand pilots over this next 12 months and we're having great success and the early indications are we're not going to have any issues at all. Ed, during the pandemic and things were a little slow, uh, Delta was working on a great terminal at LaGuardia Airport. Do you want to brag about it a little bit? <laughs> No, I'm, I'm going to brag even more once we open that front door next spring. Uh, but yeah, the COVID, there was very little good that came out of COVID. But one of the things that did come out of it is it gave us a chance to accelerate progress in rebuilding uh, the airport that New Yorkers deserve, uh, the new LaGuardia Airport. And we shaved over two years off our timeline for getting that airport completely rebuilt and redesigned. And it will be a world-class airport, not just in our country, but, by the way, but around the world. Uh, it'll be a gold standard standard and by the spring of next year we're going to have the front door open we're going to have the majority of the, of the services available we're going to have new amenities new concessionaires new technology it's going to be exciting and we're also by the way doing the same thing over at JFK we're finishing out uh, over this next uh, year and a half <coughs> excuse me the terminal 4 project and we're going to move out of terminal 2 which is the old remnants of the Pan Am facility and uh, build out the finished build out of terminal 4 now will also be open by the end of next year so so great news ahead for New Yorkers traveling. Delta is the number one airline to New York. Uh, we carry more people to New York and out and more destinations than any other airline. And we're proud to serve the great city of New York. And you're a New Yorker from Poughkeepsie. And I'm a New Yorker from Poughkeepsie. And I, I always love, love being back home. Uh, Ed Bastian, CEO of Delta Airlines, thank you so much.